Self-publishing has changed a lot over the last 10 years, but it's not just the industry that has changed. Today, we're going to be talking about the way I have changed when it comes to self-publishing and my outlook on the whole thing and how I am approaching it completely different than I have in the past. If you are new to self-publishing, this video is going to encourage you and hopefully give you a little bit of hope and maybe just give you a little bit of a relaxed feel approach when it comes to self-publishing. So a little bit of background on my self-publishing journey. I published my first novel back in 2012. I had no idea what I was doing. I basically googled everything. I wasn't really searching YouTube at the time. I don't even know if that was a thing on YouTube to search things like that. I mean, YouTube has been around for a long time, but for me, I wasn't really looking on YouTube to help me with how to self-publish. Everything I looked up, I looked up in a blog form or in a article form or in a forum form or in Google. There was no watching a video on YouTube on how to do anything. So I basically read everything and that's how I self-published my first novel. I did sell a few copies miraculously. I don't even know how I did it, but I was very kind of like, I'm almost back to that spot where I was at my first release where I was just excited that I had written a book and I was excited to get it in physical form and hold it in my hand. And you know, if one person read it, it was enough for me. Like I had like, really, I felt like I had no big expectations as far, I mean, always, we always dream, right? As writers, we always dream that somebody's gonna find your book and they're gonna read it and they're gonna fall in love and it's just gonna be the right person that's going to just take it to the next level. So there was a little sense of that, but overall it was just about really about writing, finishing it, publishing it, and holding the book in my hand. And I was really happy when that happened. Then fast forward to 2017, that's when I actually wrote my next novel, which I published and I also published a non-fiction book. It was called Hashtag Believe Damn It. And then the fiction novel was called Falling For You. I published both of those in 2017 at different times. At some point in that year, I got on YouTube. But at that point, I was on YouTube talking about non-fiction stuff. I wasn't really an author tube. Author tube wasn't a thing for me yet. I don't even know if it was a thing on YouTube yet. So again, I wasn't really searching for things. I was just publishing. Now, when I published this one, um, the 2017 novel, Falling For You, again, it was almost the same thing. I was just winging it. I just wanted to write, publish, and hold the book in my hand. And I was really excited about that book. So I was thrilled that I had not only finished a second novel, but I had published another book, which was my nonfiction. At that point, I kind of felt like, okay, this isn't just a fluke. I'm not just writing one book. I'm writing more than one. So then I, I think it was in 2020. Let me check real quick. So yeah, it was March, 2020. I published my next novel, Between Us. And if the date doesn't sound familiar to you, that was in the middle of the pandemic. So forget it. That release, that publishing, that was not, you know, that was not a great release, but I did it again. I wrote, published, and I had a beautiful cover and I was really happy about that. Then in 2021, I published my next novel and last year, no, not last year, in 2022, I published my nonfiction book, Enough. I've also published three reference books for writers. I have a little bit of experience when it comes to self-publishing, writing, creating, and self-publishing on the platform, right? When I published my novel, Between Us, in 2020, at that point, I was full force an author tube. I was in it. I was sharing content about writing and self-publishing and I was watching other writers self-publish and write on the platform. And I just wanted to do all the things I was learning about. I wanted to self-publish everywhere. I wanted the book to be like a New York Times bestseller. I wanted to be on all the lists. I wanted to be on all the boxes. I wanted to be on all the platforms I wanted to sell everywhere. I wanted to go to all the conferences. I wanted to do everything and anything that anybody threw at me on YouTube. That's what I wanted. So if somebody said they're going to this conference, I'm like, I want to go to that conference. If somebody said how to get on the USA bestsellers list, I wanted to find out how to do that. I wanted to find out which boxes I could get my book in. And needless to say, it was overwhelming. It was stressful. It was a lot. And 
sometimes it became like too much. It just became like I wasn't even like writing for the joy of it. I was writing for YouTube. I was writing for AuthorTube. I wasn't writing to enjoy myself. And then it just became too much. And I did a lot of that stuff. I did try to get in boxes. I reached out to a few boxes and it just didn't work out financially for me. But, you know, it's something I could have done, but I didn't do it because financially it just wasn't feasible. I also wanted to go to conferences. But again, with the pandemic, with, you know, it was just too hard for me to just attend a conference. So I did it online instead. I also tried to see how many reviews I could get so that I could become a US I say bestseller I reached out to a bunch of you know Instagrammers that book book grammars I guess they're called um, bookstagrammers that's what they're called and I did get some people to review the book but not everybody who got the book reviewed the book so that was a bust I did sell and upload my books to uh, draft to digital to Amazon to Barnes and Noble to Ingram Spark I did schedule a book signing, which was canceled because of the pandemic. So I did do all the things that I was learning and I was trying to learn and apply, learn and apply. None of it worked out for me. But at the end of the day, this is where we are now. This is my new approach to self-publishing. As far as the actual self-publishing right now where my mind is at, I am going to stick to KDP, which is Amazon. The reason why it's because number one, it's free. Number two, it's convenient not only for me as the writer, but to have my book on Amazon and just Amazon right now seems to be the most convenient thing for the reader. Trust me, if somebody wants to read your book and they don't have a Kindle, they're going to download the Kindle app on whatever device they have and they will read it on that or they will go ahead and buy your book even if it's not in Barnes & Noble, they will get it from Amazon. And even if your book is in Barnes & Noble, it's likely that they will still order it from Amazon. So I've released that stress of having to have my book everywhere, like as far as, you know, in Barnes & Noble and draft to digital and Kobo and all these things. I'm not, I'm not interested. I, I'm, right now, it doesn't matter to me because I feel... KDP, Amazon is the place where most people are going to get their books. In fact, that is a fact of where people buy most of their books is from Amazon. So I've released that stress of having to have my book uploaded to all the different platforms and have it everywhere. The only downside to that is that I can't set up a pre-order for physical copies. But I am looking into ordering my books from a printer instead of just Amazon so that I can do a private pre-order and see where that leads me. Now, I don't know anything about that. I don't know how that counts as far as like if I order it from a printer and people do pre-orders for me, does that mean that it counts on you know on a certain list? I'm sure it doesn't. I don't really know. I'll research all that. But that's another thing that I wanted to mention how my mindset has changed around this whole self-publishing thing. Let's say I do order these books from a printer and I sell a ton of books, but they're not on a list that it's not showing as I'm ranking number one on Amazon. My mind has really changed around that. If it's, if I'm ranking one, great, but if it's not, I don't care. Like I'm not thinking about I'm not checking it constantly like I used to I'm not gonna lie to you of course you know it's it's nice if you do get that ranking but if I am selling my books let's say privately and I sell 500 copies but Amazon doesn't show that I've sold 500 copies it is more important for me that I've sold 500 copies that 500 readers are interested in my book than actually showing up on the list. So that is a, a way that my mindset has changed around self-publishing. I'm no longer concerned with list. If I make it great, but if I don't, it's more important for me for readers to have my book. Another way that my self-publishing journey has changed over the last few years is that I've learned to relax a little more about self-publishing. In fact, I have not released something since 2021 and my next release will be this year. It's a Christmas novel. So that will be 22, 23, 24. So three years later, I'm okay with that. I don't need to release two books a year or three books a year. I want to release books that I am happy about, that I feel confident about, and I feel 
you know, that needs to take whatever steps it takes and however long it takes. If it takes me a year to write, publish a book, great. But if it doesn't, I'm not gonna beat myself up about, darn, I should have released a book. I should have, you know, done three books this year. Some of these romance authors, they write books and they are releasing like a book every other month, it seems. I have no idea how they do it. Right now, my mindset is not, a, I can't, I can't do that. I can't work my, my mind around writing and publishing a book in a year or four or five books in a year. That is crazy to me, but you know, more power to them. So yeah, this is pretty much the way my outlook has changed on self-publishing. I'm taking a more relaxed approach. I hope that you found something in here that helped you as far as your self-publishing journey. I hope that you're feeling less stressed and less pressure to you know, finish something or to approach self-publishing in a certain way. And if you want to watch more videos on self-publishing, make sure you watch this video next. Until next time, God bless you.